The kitchen gets such a beating during the holidays. You're working in there all the time, making stuff and hosting people. So I decided it was time to give my kitchen a little teeny facelift or some, not a facelift even, some lipstick. So I put some new bun feet on my little cafe table. One of the bun feet had fallen off. And so I got some new ones off Amazon and installed them. And then I washed the whole table down really thoroughly with some TSP and um, just got all of the crusted on food and everything, scuff marks and kick marks off of there. I love having this little table in the corner of my kitchen. It fits perfectly and it gives us an extra two seats and kind of a little breakfast nook in this corner where nothing else would fit really at all. And I also washed the chairs that I have there with it. These I've had these chairs forever. I got them for free. They're made of this really weird treated MDF, I think, and paint doesn't really stick to them very well. So I've painted them a couple times and the paint just kind of comes off. So I think I'm going to go ahead and paint them again. I'm just using this chalk DIY chalk paint. It's a I'm going to use this color called Hazel. It's a Sherwin Williams color, and I have a lot of it left over because my hallway is painted that color upstairs. And I mix uh, one cup of the paint with one third cup water and one third cup plaster of Paris, and then it becomes a chalk style paint which sticks better to things. So I let that dry, and while I was letting everything dry so I could paint it, I decided to clean my chandelier. This is a chandelier that we had in the attic. Um, We got it at an estate sale a long time ago, and we didn't really have a place for it. It's really a nice chandelier, and then our kitchen light just quit working about a year ago. So we decided to give it a try in the kitchen, and we have ended up really liking it the chandelier light in the kitchen. I used to think we needed one really super bright light in the kitchen, but I haven't missed it at all. I really enjoy the chandelier. I keep this basket on top of our refrigerator to hide goodies for my kids and just anything that we need to store up there, but the basket's getting a little beat up, and so I decided to swap it out for a different basket and use this basket for my... um, Oh my gosh, my roasting pans, and it's not roasting pans, sheet pans. So I clean the top of the fridge, which is always unbelievably dusty, as I'm sure you all know. If, if you ever see the top of your fridge, you're like, wow, it is so dusty up there. I would never think to dust up there because I can't see it, but it felt good to get all of that grime wiped down and just felt feels so good to know that I'm getting my kitchen just a little bit cleaner after all that work of the holidays. Kitchen really worked hard for me over the holidays. So I put this basket up there instead. This is a new basket my husband gave me. This is going to be our new treat basket. I like the way that the shape of this one kind of contrasts with the rectangular shape of the fridge. This is a fridge that I painted it over the summer. It's a 90s era fridge, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. This is my old sheet pan basket that I kept by my stove, and I'm just going to have to throw it away. It's completely wrecked. I think it's I've used it for many years and just dragged it around and probably put too many things in it, but I do really like to have a basket for the sheet pans. It just works so much better than trying to keep them in the cupboard. Um, so this one... This basket is a little bit beat up on the edges from my kids pulling it off of the fridge, but I think it's going to work well, and it's a lot roomier, so it's not going to put as much strain. It's not going to be as strained because there's plenty of room for all those, so just tuck that by the side of the stove, and I've just found this to be a really handy place to keep all of that stuff. Cutting boards and sheet pans, things that are just kind of oversized in your kitchen that you're you're always like, oh, what am I going to do with that? The other thing I decided to do in here was touch up my paint. Um, I love this color. It's mellow yellow, or they call it mellow. It's called by Sherwin-Williams. And it's a beautiful light yellow, but it does show a lot of marks. I guess when you have five kids and they're, you know, we're all just in the kitchen constantly and touching the windowsills and 
everything. So I do like to touch up the paint about once a year. So I washed these really thoroughly and then just kind of hit them with about a coat and a half of the paint. I like to go to Sherwin-Williams and buy these little sample pots of the colors in my house. They're about, well, they were last time I bought them. They were about $9 for a pot this size and get all the colors and then just have them handy. So when you want to do little quick touch-ups, you can. Something I'd like to do this year is go through the whole house and just make a note in every room of what the paint colors are. If I know, I mean, a lot of them I don't because we moved in and, and we haven't redone them yet. But the ones that I do know, I'd like to just write that down before I completely forget and hopefully get a little touch-up pot for each one. I touched up the grill on the bottom of the refrigerator too. It's painted this hazel color and then I painted some bronze accents on the metal parts of the fridge and then the main part of it is lounge green by Sherman Williams at like half strength cut with white and um, it's held up really well since August and I've been really really pleased with it especially these handles I painted them bronze lounge green over that and just left it to distress on its own and I love how it has distressed it just makes me really happy after that my table was dry and ready to get some paint so I took my hazel chalky paint over there and just touched it up I really enjoyed how the underneath color which is Parisian patina just kind of blended in with the hazel so I wasn't too worried about getting full coverage because I like the look of layer upon layer of paint and those two colors together they just they look really nice together I did have to paint the bun feet because they are brand new and they make the table stand up just a little bit taller but all in all I was really, really pleased with how it turned out and just brightened up that corner. It was looking really shabby before. One big change we just made to the kitchen in January was we got enough bar stools so that we can have an actual eat-in kitchen using our big central table. So I've had these two rush seat bottom stools for a long time and we had a couple other ones but they were just getting really cluttery in the kitchen and we didn't really have enough place for the whole family to sit around the island so my husband found these stools at walmart and the great thing about them is that they stack up so we can fit three on either side and then the two red ones on the end for mom and dad we actually only We've got seven people in our family, so we even have space, one extra for a guest. And, of course, we have a little cafe in the corner, too, for two more. So our kitchen now, all of a sudden, fits. It, it seats a lot of people, but I can still use this as a work island without like all the stools being all cluttery all around it because they also stack up. I was kind of resistant to getting this kind because I thought I wanted rush bottom seat ones, and I was always looking for them on Facebook Marketplace and never really quite finding what I was looking for. And then my husband just brought these home from Walmart. And I wasn't sure how they were going to look in here, but I have actually decided that I do really like how they look. They're kind of simple and minimalist and industrial, which is somewhat of a contrast to the rest of the kitchen. But I think that is a good thing, kind of a nice thing. When my kids were younger, we had a smaller lower table in the corner because we were, this was just too high for them to sit up. But now everybody's getting older and we can all sit around this table. And it's just wonderful to have an eat-in kitchen. And it feels very European to use this big work table as also an eat-in kitchen. And I loved having the breakfast nook too. When we did this kitchen, I was very inspired by Laurel Burns' idea of an un-kitchen. And I've got a couple videos about what I love and what I regret about our kitchen design I'll link that playlist down below and I would love to hear your thoughts or if you're someone who loves the un-kitchen, European kitchen style. Um, you'll probably enjoy my video about Duval kitchens and my video about my regrets and loves about my own attempt at making a European style un-kitchen. So the last thing I decided to tackle were those little shelves above my sink. I got these years ago at 
antiquefarmhouse.com, I believe. And they are deliberately distressed. So that little rust on the bottom was like, it came that way. And they're really, I keep all my soap and brushes up there and um, polishes and scrubs and things like that. But they needed some cleaning and TLC and my brushes are getting really worn out. And I just wanted to get some really pretty ones just to kind of pretty up my cleaning areas. That's something that I'm wanting to do this February is make my cleaning supplies attractive. Um, they work really hard for me and a lot of them, you know, they need a little TLC or they need replacing. So I'm just going to kind of go around looking at how I can make things prettier and more inspiring for our whole family to clean me. But you know, everybody, I think when things are pretty and in pretty containers, it can inspire you to want to clean. So I'm usually motivated more by how beautiful something is than by how practical it is. So I'm just kind of going around and trying to blend together beauty and practicality. And this is my first area or my little shelves here above my sink. I ended up getting these brushes from Amazon. They're like natural bristle and I love having bottle brushes. So I've got lots of vegetable scrubbers now too and they're all in these little pewter cups that I've had up there forever but it's just looking a lot neater and cleaner and more natural and pretty so I think we're going to be more motivated to do the dishes. <laughs> I hope so anyway. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I'm glad I got that little area cleaned up and it really lifts my mood which is the point of all of these little projects that I've been doing. Now it's February, started in January but I just have been having a great time doing little small easy things around the house um, this is like a deep clean of my kitchen, and boy, does it feel good to do a deep clean. Last week, I read a story in the paper that said that we respond better to small incremental changes in our, in, in our decor rather than to like big dramatic ones like the big dramatic renovations. Um, apparently, that's just kind of how we're wired. So I think that really rings true to my experience. I like to do just small incremental things, even though I do live in a fixer-upper and we do big dramatic projects as well, but even those are a series of small incremental steps. But I'd love to know what you think. Do you like to make small changes? Do they lift your mood? Um, they certainly lift mine. Like I said in my video last week, it's kind of like the lipstick effect in interiors, just a lick of paint here, um, a, no, a new little stool from Walmart, and suddenly I see the house with, with new eyes. So I'd love to know in the comments what you're doing small change wise in your interiors and I hope you enjoyed this tour of my unkitchen and if you're interested in unkitchens check out my other unkitchen videos and I will see you next week. Bye now.